Hey guys, my name is Vanessa if you are new and today we are in my kitchen and I have a list of foods, meals, just like prep type things that I would like to do just to set me up for this week. Well, not just me, but my family as well and my pet family. We are gonna be making some dog food. I'm gonna make something new that my oldest daughter Paige is actually very excited about. She picked out what she wanted me to make in this new small appliance that I got, so I'm very excited to share that with you guys. And then I just have a few other things that I like to prep every now and then when I make the time and just like block out part of my schedule to to work in the kitchen. So we're gonna go ahead and get down to the counter and I'm gonna whip up some dog food first. Oh, and our kitchen is currently, the cabinets are being painted. So the doors are off site right now. So everything is just open. So you guys are gonna see that, that all the cabinets, there's no doors, nothing. Look over here, it's all just open. So just in case, as we're going along this morning, getting some stuff done, you guys notice that and you're like, whoa, is this like a new style? No, we're just doing a little cabinet refresh, getting them painted. So we're very excited about that. I'll definitely be sharing that with you guys once it is all said and done. So dogs are super playful like always, but let's go ahead and start off this meal prep with some food for them. First, I have three pounds of ground turkey here and I'm just going to brown this up. I don't have anything else in here, no seasoning, nothing, just the turkey. And we're going, we are going to cook this completely. All right, turkey is done. I'm adding in, what is this? A 12 ounce bag of frozen chopped spinach. And I did already turn the heat off of my stove top, but as you can see, I just did that. So the heat from the turkey is going to be enough to kind of thaw out this spinach. So I'm just gonna mix it in, let it sit for a minute. Okay, see the spinach has wilted enough to mix it in pretty good. Now I'm adding in a 29 ounce can of pumpkin puree, not pumpkin pie filling, just plain pumpkin puree. Okay, I've got the pumpkin all mixed in, and now I have a 32 ounce container of plain, unflavored Greek yogurt. I'm not going to put the entire container in here. I'm not measuring either. I'm just gonna eyeball it and do about half. And I'm using the same spoon, so like there's food inside this yogurt, but I'm gonna use this yogurt um, when this food is all done for the next batch. So while I'm mixing this in, I wanted to take this time to let you guys know that yes, I am sharing dog food with you guys, homemade dog food, but I do encourage you, there's a ton of different recipes out there that people have shared, but at the end of the day, you do need to, and this is where I encourage you to check with your vet to see what is best for your dog, breed, size, like how much, I get questions all the time, how much do you feed your dogs? And I feed them what is right for them, their age, their size, all of that they do get kibble they weren't for a little while but I have two older dogs and they do need to be on a prescription type food so I do get their kibble online from a prescription that we got from our vet but they love like a fresh made food and <laughs> they love this stuff i've been making it for a while um so <laughs> once we started buying the kibble i stopped making this and they were like looking at me every time they were eating where is our wet food on top of this so i am back to making this i just don't need to make it as often so like i mentioned it's just like obviously the amount of dogs will determine on how long this will last you. I can't answer those questions for you guys because everybody's home is different. The amount of pets, like I said, the age of pets, the weight of your pet, it's all different. So I just do encourage you to check with your vet on what they think is best for your dog. 
All right, that is it. That's everything I'm adding into it this time. Also, I don't do the same things all the time. I have a list of foods that are good for them that just help add a little bit more nutritious to what they're already getting, um, foods that will like help their skin and their coat and all of that that are safe for them to eat. And I just kind of, what's at the store, what I have on hand, mix that list of safe ingredients up. So that is it for this batch. I'm gonna go ahead and get it into a bowl. All right, dog food is done. I'm going to get this in the fridge and now we are going to make something new. All right, you guys, so this is the new small appliance that I'm going to be trying out with you guys today so I can give you a quick little review on it, but it is the Joy Young Y1 Vegan Milk Maker. It actually does so much more than that. So you can make homemade almond milk, cashew milk, rice milk, oat milk, like milk, 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 right? But you can also use this as a blender. You can make some soups in here. If you guys order this, it does come with a little cookbook. And if you've been with me for a while, you know who in the house loves to drink plant-based milks. That is my daughter Paige. She will be 18 this summer. And I let her go through this and I was like, hey, what do we want to make first? And I already have it like saved here. She actually has recently really been loving horchata. She's been, she's tried this at a couple different places and wanted me to make it here at home. So it has the recipe in here for it. It's like a hot, sweet milk, sort of like a rice milk. It does have some regular cow milk in it as well, but this is what we are going to be making. You can see here the ingredients. So I need some rice, white granulated sugar, milk, olive oil, and cinnamon powder. And that is it. So I'm gonna go ahead and make this. That way it is ready for her when she gets home from work today. She can enjoy it. But like I said, you can make so much more in this. You see here it's got lots of different soups. Oh yum, smoothies, mixed juices, green juice. Here's a matcha soy milk, soy milk, rice milk, almond milk cheese. You can see the little cheese ball there. Pistachio almond milk. So not just plain almond milk, but you can flavor it up a little bit. Look at this, like a chocolate milk, a hazelnut cocoa oat milk. So a chocolate oat milk, cashew, so many different things. I'm very, very excited for this. So I do want to thank Joy Young for sponsoring this part of the video. It does come with an operation manual as well. Let me go ahead and get all my ingredients out so we can make this horchata. Okay, so I have this plugged in. As you can see, I have not set the time yet, <laughs> but this is a smart machine. Look how easy, look at all these different options that you can pick from to make your items. It's got the easy touch screen on here and you guys, it washes itself, it cleans itself. It's got a clean button and a sterilize, which I think is fantastic. It does have this cup up here where you put your ingredients and then they will come out on the bottom and then it has its own water reservoir, very similar to a coffee pot, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and get all my ingredients in here and show you how easy it is to use this. All right, so I'm gonna take this opportunity while I just take you guys through me making this horchata and a little bit of B-roll footage to talk more about this appliance just so you can get a little bit more background information. So while I am making a hot drink for the cold milk options, like all the options, soy milk, almond milk, cashew milk, all of the things, oat milk, it only takes just a few minutes. It is not the 37 minutes like this one takes. Um, this one is just a little bit more advanced. So I was gonna share with you guys how easy it was to make a regular plant-based milk, but we don't need any right now and I didn't wanna overmake anything. So I will definitely share this again in the future if you guys wanna see a little bit more about it, like just making a regular milk, but it just, only takes a few minutes, no really prep work or cleanup as you guys are gonna see. So this Y1, it also works as a blender. The blades in there are super sharp a juicer and a soup maker. I've already got my eyeball on one of the soups that comes in the cookbook. Now you can use this machine with your own recipes. You are not just tied down to the recipes that are in the cookbook that it comes with. You can also make yogurt, cheeses, breads, ice cream, desserts. I mean, just think of this as an upgraded blender. 
So if you guys are interested in this, you can check out the description box for the link. It'll take you guys to the website and you can get a lot more information about this more in depth. If there's anything specific you want to know, I'll have that link in that description box for you. But I did want to thank one more time Joy Young for sending this to me so we could try it out. Like I already mentioned, Paige is super excited about it. I knew she would love it the second that they reached out. All right, now we are going to get this started. So I'm going to press rice milk. So how to do that is you press the menu button until you are over rice milk and then your capacity is how much water you put in there. So I am about 900 to 1000 milliliters. So that's in between like 32 and 34. So I've got 34 on there and then you press the start button it tells you how long it's gonna take. The water is being added to my other ingredients here. Now this is going to cook it as well. Like I showed you guys or told you, it has this little hot symbol here and it says hot. So this is going to get hot. There is a little warning right here. Hot drinks work in progress. Do not touch. So I wanted you guys to hear that it does make noise, but it is not that loud. Perfectly fine, <laughs> not where it's gonna give me a headache. You know, some appliances can, can be pretty loud. And I was feeling kind of over the machine and the machine is totally fine. Nothing gets hot, but the blender part where the blades are, this part right here, I can feel the heat going off of it. So I definitely would not, you know, do not touch. <laughs> it says right here, do not touch. I know just by feeling the heat that this gets hot, but the rest of the machine is just fine. If you like are, have this out a little bit further on a cabinet like I do, little kids, if they, you know, come over here, you don't have to worry if they're touching like down here, they're not gonna burn themselves. I wanted to point that out. All right, you guys, so it just beeped to let me know that what I made is done. So I'm gonna take this out and get it into a container in just a minute. This part right here holds any kind of pulp. So you can see here, there's just a little bit. These two items I will wash out, but the blender itself, look at that. It is cleaning with the water. You have to at least have it to the cleaning level. That water is going to clean it. And then you've added what you want for the recipe. This one is a little bit louder, but I do not want to be touching those sharp blades that are in there. Okay, it is done with the self-clean. So it has used pretty much all of the water. I'm gonna go ahead and dump that out. Let me go ahead and open this. I love the locking feature. It's still pretty steamy in there. Yeah, glad I don't have to touch those blades. <laughs> they are super sharp, but that's nice. 
it all goes into here. So now all I have to do is take this out. I have to be careful since I have the camera in my hand as well because this is hot water. Just like kind of very similar to a steam cleaner when you're doing your floors. The bin that takes all the yucky water, you can see here it is discolored so it completely cleaned this out. And now all I have to do is dump this and this is super easy to hand wash as well as this. This is glass so this is even dishwasher safe. So. I'll probably just hand wash both of them to make it easier, but awesome. My daughter is gonna be super excited. But this is still super hot, so I made myself a little glass because this was a little too small for the amount that I made, but once everybody gets home, I know they're going to enjoy it. If you guys have never had horchata, it's like a sweet rice milk. It reminds me of like rice pudding in a drink form. You can definitely drink it cold as well. I'll probably let this sit out for just a little bit and then get it in the fridge, but you can rewarm it pretty easily. So okay. I'm gonna go ahead and get these two things in my uh, sink and then I can check that off and let's move right along to some more stuff on my prep list. Okay, next up I have several fruits that I need to prep. So we're gonna start out with the blueberries. <laughs> my dog Oliver sees like a squirrel or a bird taunting him outside. So if you guys hear that scratching, it's him, <laughs> the back door, trying to get out. All right, so I have a bowl here. I'm just going to toss my blueberries in here and I'm starting out with the blueberries because I wanna make some blueberry muffins. So I want to get these nice and dried up before I start baking with them. So I'm just gonna quickly, I'll like do better at going through and picking out um, pieces that we don't wanna be eating after they're all washed and I get them out on some paper towels, but whatever I can see here, I'll go ahead and grab. And then I'm just going to fill my bowl with some cold water. And I don't measure, but I am just gonna add a little bit of vinegar as well. And I just need the water to cover the top. I'll give them a little mix up here and let them sit. I really don't let them sit for too long. You guys let me know in the comments how long you guys let your produce sit when you're washing it. I've heard people, some people say up to 20 minutes, but I've done that before and I feel like my produce gets a little soggy. So maybe I'm not putting enough vinegar in it or too much water, I don't know. So I only let mine sit for about five minutes. All these little tops to the blueberries are coming up to the top of the water, so it's really easy for me to pick them out. But anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and let those sit for five minutes. Okay, after my time is up, I'm going to strain them, and then I am going to give them a little rinse. Also, these are some jumbo blueberries. <laughs> They're gonna be pretty massive. I'll have to try to pick like the smaller ones for my muffins. All right, now I'm going to pour them out on some paper towels and just let them air dry while I work on the rest of the produce. All right, next up I've got raspberries, in my bowl of water and vinegar. And the blueberries are over here on the counter on some paper towels just so they can dry off a bit. Okay, raspberries are out on the paper towels and strawberries are soaking. All right, all the fruit that I have to prep is out. It's been rinsed off, cleaned, and now I have plans for some of the blueberries. I am going to cut up the strawberries. These ones are huge. So I'm gonna cut them up, and then for the raspberries and the grapes, I'm just going to get them into containers. I can't tell what's wrong or right. Should I go without saying goodbye? All I know is I need to be somewhere else to set me free. I don't know what to do now. Need to figure it out, but I don't know how. I hope the wind will carry me and take me away to where I should be.
sun won't go away Wide awake with an open mind Looking out from a mountain high I don't know what to do now Need to figure it out But I don't know how I hope the wind will carry me And take me away to where I should be All right, you guys, so I did leave out one cup of blueberries, and I actually put those in the freezer, the recipe that I'm going to follow to make these blueberry muffins asks for them to be frozen and unthawed. So I put them in the freezer, and we will make those muffins in a little bit. But in the meantime, I have this block of cheese. I totally should have got scissors out. That's all right. I have this block of cheese that I'm gonna go ahead and shred up. I'm just gonna use my hand held shredder instead of the attachment for the KitchenAid, just because this is easier to wash and I don't want to lug out that big old KitchenAid all the time. I am gonna shred this entire block and the way that I keep my cheese is I just put it in some kind of baggie. I do have reusable bags. I also have the Ziploc bag. So I just grabbed a Ziploc, Ziploc bag. Wow, that was really hard to say for some reason. And I cut my blocks of cheese into quarters. It's just easier to hold onto. And then I just put the shredded cheese in the bag and it stays good in the refrigerator for a few weeks. We can use it to top on extra, on any dishes or inside dishes, or sometimes my kids will just go in there and grab a little handful of shredded cheese and snack on it. So that is what I'm gonna go ahead and get prepped right now. All right, one block of cheese is shredded. So I just try to get out as much of the air as I can without like completely smushing the cheese, but I just close it up and like I said, this will keep in the fridge for a few weeks. All right, guys, we are moving right along. You can probably hear the dryer. If you can't, just ignore that I just said that. <laughs> but I picked this up a while ago from the Dollar Tree, actually, and I figured I would go ahead and just make it real quick to have in the fridge for like any of the kids or the husband. I might try it, but I typically don't drink things like this, but it is Lipton and hibiscus lime so i guess it's hibiscus lime flavored tea because lipton is like a tea brand it says sweetened with pure cane sugar and this one package makes one pitcher now my pitcher is huge it goes up to it holds a gallon but i only need this will make two quarts so i've got my water in here to 64 ounces which is two quarts and this one is just a super easy thing to prep for the week <laughs> i'm just pouring the little powder that comes in this package into my water stirring it up getting it in the fridge and then this will be ready for like i said the kids and mark if he wants to enjoy this week all right you guys so i just shared that I cut up a cucumber just to get that prepped. If the produce is prepped, it's the kids just eat it more, you know, versus there's some weeks where I don't prep the produce earlier in the week or like the day after I buy them. And sometimes I've had to throw things away because they just don't eat, get eaten. But if they're already ready in containers that I can just pull out and have with like every single meal, which is what I like to do. I just pull out the fruit and veggies with <laughs> breakfast, lunch during the weekend, sometimes dinners. If I know it's more of like a meal that the kids aren't super happy about, I'll pull out the fruits and veggies and they will go to town. So finished up with the cucumber. That is it as far as produce for this week. Then while I was putting the cucumbers up, I realized I had two cans of crescent rolls. I actually have three, but these don't expire. I mean, the, the goodbye date isn't until June. However, we like to have like rolls with soups and stuff occasionally. So I'm gonna go ahead and just cook one up and put it in a freezer bag. Bread freezes great. 
So I'm gonna do one plain, and then the other one, I am going to just do like a little sweet um, treat for the kids, whether it's an after school snack, which would be perfect for today. The kids love it when they come home and they see something new that either I've made or I purchased for them. So Nutella and Crescent is super easy to make. And all you do is, I'll show you guys, you just open up the package and smear it with the Nutella, roll it up just like a crescent and bake it according to package directions. Super easy and it just gives it a little bit of that sweet hint of a taste. So I'm gonna go ahead and get both of these set up on my pans. I do have them both lined with foil just to help so nothing sticks. So I've got some regular rolls here and I've got the ones that I put just a little smear of Nutella on and I am going to, let's see, my ovens are already preheated to 375 and per package directions, nine to 12, I typically leave them in for my ovens, about 11 minutes works perfectly just until they're light golden brown on the top. All right, we've got some crescent rolls ready. I was originally gonna put them in the freezer but I think I have a dinner. I need to double check my meal plan. I think I have a dinner in the next night or two that these would be good on the side. What I will do is for like reheating them up because I will put these in the refrigerator because if you put your bread items in the fridge, they just last longer just in case, you know, something happens, we don't get to eat them. I don't want them to go bad, but I will put these just like this on a little pan in the oven at like 350 for five minutes and then I'll brush a little melted butter over them and they will um, crisp right up and be super yummy and not cold from the fridge. These, however, I am just gonna leave out. I'm gonna put them in a little container and that way they are out for the kids to snack on this week, but I am gonna let them cool completely first. Okay, moving right along, we're gonna have a salad with one of our dinners this week. So I do have the Olive Garden Italian dressing in the fridge, but my kids prefer, it's only really the adults that like the Italian dressing. The kids prefer ranch, so we don't have any ranch in the fridge. I do have this big thing of ranch seasoning, so I'm gonna go ahead and make my own dressing, nothing fancy or anything. I'm just following the back of this. However, I do put one extra tablespoon when I've made it like this, so it's one cup of mayo, one cup of milk, and then two tablespoons of seasoning, and it makes two cups, but I put three tablespoons because I like it to taste very ranchy. So <laughs> I do extra, and I mean, I've had this for a while, so the seasoning isn't as potent as it used to be. So three tablespoons is what, is what works best for us, but this is something that you can totally make your own. Like if I had buttermilk, I do have the powdered buttermilk, but I'm not really a fan of that. I like fresh buttermilk. I feel like that it, it, it is a difference. Even though the powdered, it's easier, more shelf stable. I'm not a huge fan of it. And definitely if you have buttermilk, it tastes loads better, but I'm just gonna use our milk. So like I said, one cup, one cup, and then however much you want of the seasoning. I pick this up, it does have this lid, which is great if you make your own dressings. I found this at the Dollar Tree, so that's what I'm going to use. And I am gonna use, since I've been using this all day, I'm just gonna use this to measure out my ingredients, get it in here, shake it all up, and then we'll have some homemade ranch for this week. All right, ranch dressing is done. I just use this to mix it all up in, so I'm gonna get this in the fridge. My crescent rolls are 
pulled off enough to handle. So I put the plain ones in this reusable bag, which will go in the fridge until we want to use them. And then I'm gonna leave these ones here out on the counter because I know each of my kids are gonna want one after school today. And then um, once they have that, I'm, uh, I'm probably just gonna leave them out on the counter. I was thinking about putting them in the fridge, but then they'll get a little more hard and they definitely prefer them when they are soft. So huh, two, three, three more things checked off my list. I do have a few errands to run, so I'm gonna go do that, but I do have some more stuff that I want to try to get done tonight. So I am going to include those as well. So for you guys, it's just gonna be a second, but for me, it is going to be a few hours before I get back to meal prepping. All right, it is definitely the end of the night. I am having some kind of reaction. My eyes are feeling very itchy, so not sure what's going on, but I'm going to call it. We actually just finished eating dinner. The kids are getting like their nighttime stuff done, getting ready for bed, all the things. But I do have a few things left on my like prep list that I wanted to do, but nothing like a dire that needed to be done. So I might, I'm thinking of vlogging later on this week and sharing it within this same week when this video goes out, hopefully, fingers crossed. Um, so if you guys wanna see the other things that were on my prep list, make sure you are subscribed, hit the bell so you're notified, you don't miss any of my uploads. If you guys like meal prep videos, give this one a big thumbs up. That let, just lets me know that whenever I have some time and I wanna get some stuff done to go ahead and pull out the camera and share it with you. So I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. Don't forget to check out the milk maker down in the description box. That thing is so cool. When Paige got home, she doesn't like to be on camera, otherwise I would have shared her reaction, but she thought it was fantastic and she can't wait to start playing with it. So other than that, that's all I have for you guys today and I will see you in the next video. Bye.